Okay, so this is a video game review for Shadow of Memories for the PlayStation 2. This game was released in 2001 and is a cinematic puzzle adventure game. Now, I want to stress the word cinematic. It's something that I'm going to come back to later in the review. Now, due to the nature of the game being story-focused, my review will attempt to leave unspoiled much of the storyline and so perhaps will not come across as quite the enjoyable game I make it out to be, but unlike other reviews, I'm purposely not using the best footage available. The game sees you playing as Ike Kutch, a man, well, more of a big girl's blouse, who is targeted by an unknown assailant who murders him at the beginning of the game and who does so numerous times throughout the game by various interesting means for the reason that you must discover. When you die, you enter a sort of limbo where the homunculus, a strange creature, advises you on how you might avoid such a fate and bestows upon you a time-traveling device. Now, this sees you going back in time and rectifying the present and foiling your assailant during each level or chapter throughout the game. Given how crucial this premise is to capturing the player's imagination, if this already doesn't appeal to you, the game will never appeal to you. However, for me, it was one of the best ideas for a game I've come across in just years and really caught my imagination when I first played it. During each chapter or stage, you'll usually start with a death scene and the puzzle is to work out how to avoid that fate. I'll give just one example in this review and it refers to the first puzzle in the game. Your assailant attacks you with a knife down a sort of lonely street but upon revisiting the scene 30 minutes before, you must convince local townspeople to join you in the main square at the appointed hour when the killer will strike, so that the killer is dissuaded from doing the deed in front of onlookers. The cast of characters is wide enough to keep you guessing who the killer is and has various multi-layered plots happening all the time. This keeps the narrative interesting, and narrative, like I said, is a word very much associated with Shadow of Memories. Firstly, however, I'm going to talk about some positives. The story takes place in one town, a fictitious town, which feels very oldie European and particularly Germanic with place names and character names. All the characters speak with strong American accents and the character's behavior and manner of speak feels very Japanese. It's a mash of different cultures which some players may not be able to reconcile but should be able to look past to enjoy the weaving narrative and solid premise. The graphics I found to be tasteful and easy to admire even after so many years. The town is perhaps a little bit pokey for some, but much preferable to a sprawling concrete jungle where you spend most of your time traveling from A to B. What's particularly nice is how when your character travels back in time, the color palette will often change to match the time period, with the 1900s shown as a monochromatic snow town and medieval times viewed in a rustic brown filter. It really accentuates the time difference. Some characters have ancestors which bear an almost exact resemblance to their descendants, which is another nice touch. And while you might find the lingo to be quite modern, or indeed the fact that someone might wear modern spectacles in the late 1500s. These are things, again, that I say should be easily overlooked, although some players who demand perfect historical accuracy might find some of the liberties taken a bit irksome. The controls are simple and well suited to players who don't play many games, with just a few buttons to use in the whole game. The player moves Ike simply with the left analog stick or D-pad. The character rotation is mapped to the shoulder buttons, not a second analog stick, which in this game works really well and it works so much better than the second analog stick in fact because you don't have to look up or down either it's very easy for someone not familiar with games save options are restricted to after each completed chapter but this makes sense given the nature of the game and there's a quick map button which is particularly nice as well furthermore while you have an inventory you won't have many items to use during the game so it won't be too full and useful items to read use or pick up are all highlighted and clearly shown in the game so you shouldn't really be trawling through hours of random clicking by background detail thinking that might be an item and in fact it's just part of the the background things that you need to see things that you need to find are usually highlighted very clearly which is so useful in a game like this the screen is uncluttered and the music is subtle and not distracting but does add a bit of tension and mystery in just the right amount there's only one real collectible in the game and that's really 
the energy units which your time traveling device uses for each time travel. They're easy enough to find and while I'm not really a fan of collecting items in games, this isn't too taxing. It adds a small extra gameplay element to what is essentially quite a simple enough game. The game is very helpful in giving you cutscene and voice prompts to solve puzzles and it shouldn't prove too taxing even for quote unquote casual gamers to work through this game. So on occasion your character will talk out loud about what he needs to do and that's really just a not so subtle hint of what you need to be getting on with. You also have a journal alongside to capture the main thoughts and what you ought to be doing so your objective shouldn't be too too difficult to work out. Some players won't like this lack of subtlety but personally I love it. I love being brought by the hand throughout a game, especially if it's a puzzle game. I just enjoy taking in the story. Now here's the point in the review where the game hits a few potential snags. Firstly, game length. I completed this game for about the third or so time recently in over four hours in a single day. Now that's not taking into account a little bit of repetition and the working out of puzzles for a newcomer might expect to have to come up against, so it'll probably take roughly around six hours. For some, that might sound off alarm bells. How can a game that's only six hours long still be good? Well, it's a matter of quality over quantity. Personally, I don't like buying games full price or whatever, which only give you a certain amount of hours. Well, this is a nine-year-old game, though, and you should be able to pick it up fairly cheap. I think they could have added a few more levels, but the levels that you get are fairly engaging, and while I would probably not have bought this game knowing its short duration, I'm glad I did. There are six different endings for the decisions that you make during the game, so there is replay value to see each different ending, and the game thankfully saves these cinematics, so you can watch them back to back, and some of them are very deep indeed. So what's another gripe? Well, apart from some pretty robotic characters, who are lacking somewhat in emotion at times, the game is basically an interactive film. There are cutscenes galore, in fact, when introducing a friend who doesn't play computer games to Shadow of Memories, he had time enough to make himself dinner, pour himself out a good pint of Guinness. I'd go as far as to say that some players will find the game 80 to 90% cutscenes. People who take longer over puzzles will spend more time playing the game, but still find the cutscenes drive the story. As someone who said previously how much he enjoys playing games with plenty of cutscenes in, this is really a true test of that statement and I stand by it. I played this game many years ago and it plays just as well many years later however if you've already completed sections before you can skip past those cutscenes which you've already seen which is a relief and they combine to really create a multi-layered narrative. So to the conclusion this review is not designed to wow the viewer because to show too much would render playing the game an anti-climax as you'd have seen all the best bits. Furthermore, this game, and I have to stress this above everything else, is not for everyone. In fact, it will be incredibly easy for many players. It will be far too short for other players. There's no guns, there's no combat, there's no driving. It's just using items, exploring, talking to characters, and sitting back and enjoying the story unfold. But, ultimately, it's whether or not you buy into the premise a man trying to prevent his own death by traveling back in time to discover the source of the threat. That should convince you whether or not to play or purchase this game. I wouldn't recommend spending the family silver on this game, as it might not provide the return some may expect. That said, I picked this game up on a whim many years ago at a very cheap price, and what I found was an incredibly original game, which while narrative heavy, was free of any frustration so it did its job of entertaining me, even if it was just for a few hours. It's a well-made game which doesn't treat the player like a police detective. It does a lot of hand-holding through the journey, but that just means that you can spend more time enjoying the story unravel. Possibly a game for people who go nowhere near computer games, but then again only if they really buy into the concept. There is room for improvement, but Shadow of Memories is a game that stands out from the crowd. I give Shadow of Memories a 7.4 out of 10. And that's me.